Kevin knows how you come across somebody once in a while you, you shouldn't have messed with. That's me. Well, I'm I am not an African American. You're Oreo cookie, white on the inside and black on the outside. I don't have an Afro. I have an Amerifro. Talking that idiotic stuff you talk about, I would slap you. Go ahead, make my day. Black as the ace of spades, but 100, 100 percent American. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama. The Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. I have back with me my friend Wally Shubat, author, speaker, and former Muslim terrorist. He is the head of the Wally Shubat Foundation. We're going to tell you how to get to that. Uh, his brand new book is, I believe, a very important book for everybody and their mama. It's called The Case for Islamophobia, Jihad by the Word, America's Final Warning. And I, I must encourage you folks to get the book. Um, we have him back because I wanted him to update us on what he has discovered now that one of the bombers, the older brother, is dead, and the other one was captured. He's in the hospital, but apparently he is uh, responding in writing. Waleed, welcome back to the show, sir. Thank you for coming back on with me. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Any any update? What have you found out about these two guys? Uh, are they in any way at all connected with terrorism? Well, uh, you know, Americans want to know, you know the radicalization process. It seems to them that if a person, you know, got radicalized, how did they get radicalized, so on and so forth. I think that's the uh, route we're taking in trying to understand. Uh, you know, they wanted him alive so they can you know, basically uh, question him. Uh, in my view, there's much misunderstanding on the radicalization process uh, by Americans. Uh, I'll give you an example. I, I one time was visited by a, a Israeli general, a Shimon Aram. Uh, he asked the question. He says, I don't understand. When a, we were in Israel, you know, this radicalization process, how does it work? I began to probe into uh, his life, his family life. I said, well, were you ever, uh, did you ever suffer terrorism? He says, yes, of course, you know. You, we hired people, Muslims, worked for us. And all of a sudden, overnight, they decided to turn on us and uh, kill a relative of ours. And it, this happens all over the place. So yeah. I said, well, what sort of crockpot uh, did they go through? Were they radicalized? Well, no. They went to a Friday sermon, and they heard a sermon, kill Jews, and off they went killing Jews. So, you know, Americans need to understand the thwarted terrorism. Uh, what terrorist attacks were thwarted? We ignore that. This wasn't the first time Chechens attacked us. There was a Solij Mantolovic, you know, opened fire in a mall in Salt Lake City and killed Americans more than this incident. It was tucked under the rug. Uh, so if we examine all the thwarted attacks, we will see the nature of the problem. You had uh, Khaled ad dawsari who wanted to detonate weapons of mass destruction, including killing President George Bush. Uh, you know, we had tons of thwarted attacks. We had... Uh, you know, uh, in New York, in, an incident in which uh, Al Qaeda wanted to also, you know, it, it homegrown. So it doesn't really matter if the per, you know if the person was recruited, slow pressure cooked, or whatever. Right. What we're de you know, why? I mean, the first question America needs to ask themselves: Okay, the guy went to Russia, then he went to Chechnya for training. When was he radicalized? Before he left. <laughs> why did he leave anyway? He left to get training. He was already radical. So, you know, amazing. He, so, Waleed, if all these other incidents are happening, and I believe that they are, why why are they keeping them away from us, uh, informing us about them, about them? Because the connection would become Saudi Arabia. Question: Who radicalized Chechnya? Was it not Al Khattab and Shamil? Those two, one of them, Saudi Arabia, was very much involved in recruiting. Let's not forget the hand of the CIA, who aided and abetted the Mujahideen in Afghanistan in the first place. 
It was under President Reagan. It was the misunderstanding of Americans that we need to hire our enemy's enemy. Russia was our enemy at the time, so let's hire the Mujahideen to fight against the Russians, and let's give them arms. Who is discussing that? So it is the mistake of the Americans of not understanding the nature of the beast. Currently, they want the man alive. Yet Numbers 3531 says, Ye shall not take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer, which is guilty of death, but he shall surely be put to death. Yet, what are we doing? We want the man alive. You know, wow. we, we want to probe his mind. We want to understand the evil mindset of the terrorists. You know, we need to start thinking as Americans, as Christians in this country. That's the, the major yeah. problem. I agree with to, that. Yeah, we have decayed in this country. We don't understand it. We're the bad guys, me and you. We're the bad guys. Yeah. Only when there's a terror attack, we become the good guys. These days, we're the good guys. We're enjoying it, aren't we? <laughs> yes. But tomorrow, we will become the bad guys. We're the Islamophobes. We're the ones who are hate mongers, racist, bigoted, and all these things. So, you know, let's, let's face the reality in America. In America, we're sleeping behind the wheel. We never understood the problem. We never want to confront the issue of Islamization. We never want to confront the issue of the infiltration in our government, in the CIA. Why you ask why the CIA is not telling us? You know, because many agents are in the CIA are Islamists. Many agents in the FBI are Islamists. The main bosses of these entities are pro-Islamists. I think it appears to me the reason so many Americans are asleep and not really dealing with reality is because they have put too much faith in the government and in media. They don't really think for themselves or, or check out things for themselves. They believe what they've been told. You're absolutely correct. They just believe what they're told. You know, the first suspect that was arrested, Al-Harbi, we want to know about him. Why aren't the American people being told about him, about the family connections? You know, why is his relatives Al-Qaeda leaders in Yemen and in Syria? You know, what about the American intelligence that also exposed some of Al-Harbi's here in the, you know, uh, one of them is uh, uh, Adil Radia Al Harbi, who is the main recruiter in Iran for Al Qaeda. He's the one that recruits the terrorist infrastructure. What about the Saudis who support terrorism on the open? Major Saudi names who raises funds to try to bring back the terrorist Khalid al Dawsari to Saudi Arabia. You know, if Saudi Arabia was so innocent, why do they want to release terrorists from Guantanamo Bay yeah. back to Saudi Arabia? And that reason is because a Saudi Muslim is a supreme being. We talk about racism in this country. We talk about racism. Let's discuss <laughs> racism. You know, there's real racism when a Saudi has a slave, sex slave, in which he rapes her continuously by the name of a Turkey. And then he's arrested, thrown in jail, prosecuted, sentenced, and the American administration have to send diplomats to appease, to appease the king of Saudi Arabia. You know, we're talking about a rapist, slave owner, who says to the judge, you know, I don't need to be, pro I shouldn't be prosecuted. I'm doing what I do. This is what we do. This is our religion. You can't stop us. You know, this is the kind of thing they never expose in the major media. Right. That's yeah. right, absolutely. And I think if the people knew that, uh, Wally, they would be they would be more alert and I don't, there would be something else happening. That's correct. I mean, we, we talk about gun control in this country. You know, excuse me, thank God that Boston have guns, that people have guns in their homes. That, yeah. Those terrorists were roaming around about. What do you need when you're sitting in your home? Somebody's coming into your house and hiding inside your boat. You need a gun. That's right. Let me, let me take a quick break here, Wally. 888 Amazing times, folks. It's time to wake up America. Back in a moment. Ali Shabbat is with me. Uh, he's very busy at this time, especially with all this stuff going on. He's trying to warn America. He's asking you to wake up, America. Wake up, wake up, wake up. 
and he's a former Muslim terrorist himself, so he knows how these people think. He understands what's exactly going on. And I have to warn you, America, I've been warning you in my way for the last 23 years. I just don't know what it's going to take to wake you up. Uh, we got to get to your calls here in a minute. Wally, I know that you're really busy. Do you have time to take some calls today? As long as you want, Brother oh. Peterson. You're one of my favorites. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Let me just ask this quick question before we go to the callers. Uh, do you know what happened to that Saudi national who was uh, reportedly ready to be deported? Um, yes, Al-Harbi. Yes. I monitor the Arabic language. They're not going to deport him. He's going to continue to stay in the U.S. I have two questions regarding that issue. Number one, why is he in the country in the first place? If they're, if, if they're not going to deport him, why is he in the country in the first place? Yeah. If they're going to deport him, then why? American people have a right to know. You asked, what will it take Americans to wake up? Uh, I'm afraid that the only language Americans are beginning to understand is death toll. That is unfortunate. Yeah, it is. When the death toll happens, then people listen to you and me. Okay, so what, what should we do? Pray for death? That's not Christian. You know, we should pray for for foresight. Foresight. Yes, Americans sir. need foresight to see into the future what is in the horizon from what we have at hand. Several attempts to destroy America, several attempts to kill Americans. We ignore the thwarted terror attacks. I asked the question from every introvert, do you know the Ghamidi clan? Nobody knew. You know, the Ghamidi clan, Saudi clan, says on their website that they're proud to have provided number three, Ahmad Ghamidi, and number four, Hamza Saleh al Ghamidi. Who are these two? They're the ones that destroyed the South Tower on Manhattan on 9-11. Right. Hello, Amazing. and yet the, the first lady of New York wants to be Huma Abedin, a connected Wahhabist who worked for the Saudi interest under Abdullah Omar Nasif, one of the godfathers of Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda can kill Americans, and then they can have their affiliates become mayors, you know, the wife of a mayor in this case, Anthony Weiner, who wants to become the mayor of New York. So only a country that is sleeping behind the wheel, could have such infiltration, pandemic infiltration, into every aspect of society from CIA, FBI, university, churches, you name it. It's all in there. There are many of them in our universities around the country, right? That's correct. What do you think the Oriental Studies Department is in every university about? It's about preparing Americans to accept Islam as a religion, as a system, it's about making us Sharia compliant. What is the man behind the Ground Zero Mosque Faisal Abdel Rauf want? He's the one that coined the term, you know, to make America Sharia compliant. What is Sharia? How many Americans know what Sharia even is? It is an Islamic legal system. They want to establish their hegemony. They simply just don't want to kill us. They want us to accept their form of government, their form of law. Their mosques aren't simply places of worship. A mosque in Islam is an embassy for the Islamic movement, the Wahhabist movement. Why is over 90% of American mosques affiliated with Wahhabism? Do we ever ask that question? You know, mm -hmm. what's the Saudi petrodollar doing in our country? People ask the solution. The solution is very simple, Brother Peterson. Stop the influx of Saudi immigration and Islamic immigration into this country. Yeah. That will save us not billions, trillions, and stop importing Saudi oil. That will end the problem. Israel put a wall to stop the terrorists in, 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 you know, coming into the Israeli proper land. Why don't we make our own wall, not a wall, a physical wall, that is, make a policy in which we don't allow student visas, we don't allow immigration from countries that harbor hatred towards America, who want to kill Americans. End of story. That should end the problem. Yet who is willing to do it? The country, the government, yeah. the policymakers? They don't want to even address it. Let me ask, uh, and, and the board is smoking here. The board is smoking. People want to talk to you. Is, do you know if Obama, uh, if Obama is a Muslim or not? Because I don't see where he tends to speak out against them and what's going on at all. 
When I come back, I'll let you answer that, and then we'll go straight to the callers. Boy, back in a moment, folks. What they do, they smile in your face. All the time they want to take your place, the backstabbers. Backstabbers, they smile in your face. All the time they want to take your place, the backstabbers. Backstabbers, all you fellas. And I wonder when we are ever going to change. Okay, folks, I want you to go and I urge you to go to Wally's uh, website, S-H-O-E-B-A-T dot com, all right? S-H-O-E, we're going to give out that again before he will, before we leave the airways, S-H-O-E-B-A-T dot com. You got to get the books. You got to see the videos. You got to know what's going on, America. He's trying to wake you up. Wally Shabbat is with me. Uh, Wally, real fast here, uh, and we got to get some calls. Um, is Obama Muslim? Do you know? Well, let's take a look at his record. On the New York Times, he stated emphatically the most beautiful sound he's ever heard was the azan, the call to the prayer. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, ashaduna la ilaha illallah, ashaduna Muhammad rasulullah which is, by the way, the statement of faith in Islam. This is supposed to be after his conversion to Christianity. How many Americans know Obama speaks classical Arabic? He speaks Quranic Arabic. How many Americans even can, you know, plug in Obama and the Bible or Obama and the Quran and see for themselves the statements he makes? He says, the Bible teaches slavery. Have you not read your Bible lately? And then when he talks about the Quran, the Quran says, the Quran says in every positive way. If a person converts from one religion to the other, don't you think he will be critical of his previous religion? Yeah. So, you know, excuse me, can somebody provide me Obama's testimony, conversion from Islam to Christianity? Can you provide me that testimony? You know, what about his family connection in Kenya? He had Saeed Obama, his uncle, and on Al Jazeera television. I had an entire interview with Musa Ismail Obama, his other cousin. And he says that the communication between the Muslim family side of President Obama to President Obama at the White House is commenced by Saeed Obama. I have photos of Saeed Obama sitting with Muslim World League. These are the Wahhabist infrastructure in Saudi Arabia. I have statements from his own cousin stating that they fund, they raise funding. Everybody should study the Sara Obama Fund. The Sarah Obama Fund, his grandmother, raises funds, supposed to be in the English language, that is, for aiding the AIDS victims and the poverty issue in Africa. Yet, Musa Ismail Obama says none of the monies goes to those things. They go to the recruitment to the most virulent Wahhabist school in Saudi Arabia. One of them is Umm Al-Qura University in Saudi Arabia. I had translated everything verbatim. Nobody can refute my translation work. And Umm Al-Qura University, by the way, was founded by Muhammad Abdul Wahhab, the father of Wahhabism. So the Obama family is very much steeped into this whole thing. Mm. You have his cousin, his, sorry, his, he is, I think his brother, George Obama. He doesn't even communicate with, living in poverty. Why? Yeah. Because George Obama's side of the family is from the Christian side. He keeps very close links with his Muslim family. He hates the links with his Christian family. So now that I've concluded Obama could likely be Muslim still, people will condemn me and condemn you for even interviewing me over this issue. <laughs> I know. Yet my question to all these people who want to object is this. If Islam is such a peace-loving religion, what is the problem of us suspecting that President Obama still harbors the peace-loving religion? What if we thought Obama was a New Ager, Shinto, Hindu, Buddhist? That wouldn't be a problem. But to state that Obama is Muslim is a problem for the very ones who say Islam is a peace-loving religion. This tells me that there is a major part of our society lives as double-minded people. Yeah. They have double-mindedness. They do not understand. They do not care. It's because they are on the side of evil. Amazing. Let's go down to Memphis, Tennessee and talk to Common. Common, thanks for calling and thanks for holding. You're on the air with Waleed. Good morning, Jesse. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, well, you you asked one of my questions, but I wanted to ask. I went to the site the other day after I heard Waleed on the show, 
and the, the site was down. Uh, so is the picture of Al Harabi on there now? Yes, it's still there. What happens with our site is it gets bombarded by the enemy. They try to bring it down. So they will they will uh, hit it with with millions of hits to slow it down. And that's the nature of the beast that we're dealing with. Uh, and one more question I have. What is the significance of uh, not uh, reading the bombing suspect his Miranda rights? Uh, they, they well, that is understandable. That. that is understandable because if you read him his Miranda rights, that means you cannot question him as a right for an attorney. If there is a danger, an impending danger on the civil population, uh, when you arrest somebody, you do not you do not have to read them the Miranda rights. Uh, I give credit for how they arrested the guy. Uh, however, I don't believe that arresting terrorists is the solution. I think killing the terrorist on the spot is the, is the better solution. Why? Because if you imprison the terrorist, then that will basically entice other terrorists to kidnap Americans to demand the release of that current terrorist. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Thank you, Carmen. I appreciate it. 888-775-3773. Let's go back to Memphis, Tennessee, and talk to Bill. Bill, thanks for calling. You're on the air with Wally Shabbat. Yes, thank you. Yes. Um, uh, Reverend, you always have uh, people on that give us straight talk. Thank and you. I salute this gentleman. I, I've learned so much in the, in the in the few minutes of listening to him. Thank you. Question, two questions, twofold questions. One, sir, uh, listen to both of them. One, how is it that you're able to to exist um, n- now that you are no longer affiliated with um, any terrorist groups? Number one. Number two, um, what do you make of uh, President Obama uh, being very uh, Eric, uh, angry when the gun legislation failed and almost pacifist, pacifist in nature when uh, the Boston bombing occurred, telling us uh, don't rush to judgment. Good question. What, what do you make of that? Uh, well, that as thing? far as the first question, you know, how do I exist? If I answer this, this, this question, then I will disclose my security apparatus. Okay. All right. It's very, Fair very enough. difficult. It's not an easy thing to do. I mean, look at Pastor Peterson. You know, he comes on television with Michael Dyson, and he's attacked by the sophist argumentation against him when he was trying to tell the truth of yeah. how elections work in this country. President Obama. While he hold that thought, I want everybody here. Let me take a uh, final break here. Uh, Bill, hold on there for me. Back in a moment, folks. I got a text here I got to read from a friend who's listening to the radio show right now. He says, uh, speaking of my, my friend and my guest, Waleed, this man is the best and most important guest you have ever had. I hope God continues to give angels the overtime they need to protect him. And I agree to that 100 percent. Wally Shabbat is with me. Wally, before we go back to the calls, I, I don't want to, we're going to run out of time here. I want to make sure that folks get to your website to get your books and see what's really going on with this deal. Shubat.com, just like you spell the word shoe, S-H-O-E and bat, like a baseball bat, S-H-O-E-B-A-T.com. And I urge everyone to read the book, The Case for Islamophobia. Jihad by the word. In fact, this book came out and we issued press releases just before the Boston bombing, warning Americans. This is why we say final warning. Yeah. And no takers. There was no one interested until Boston was, you know, we were hit in Boston attack. And, Unfortunately, now we're busy, Mr. Peterson. See? Yes. It's, a, it's amazing that people have to have something bad to happen 
for the, in order for them to wake up, rather than waking up first to prevent this stuff from happening. I do want to say that we checked your website during the break, and it is up. It's working, folks. Uh, let me go quickly back to Bill out of Memphis. Bill, are you still there? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, the, do you the remember? Again, was yeah, the why, why does he think uh, President Obama visibly um, upset that the gun legislation failed <laughs> and was not so over the bottom? <laughs> We need to position. understand how the liberal mindset works. You know, like smoking. You ever notice, you know, smoking problem? Oh, you're not allowed to smoke, not allowed to smoke, even outside the airport. Well, the reason it's not about smoking. They don't care about your health. They don't care if your kids eat McDonald's and get fat, you know. Uh, <laughs> they don't care if they drink soda pop. It's about control, you know. Yeah. Americans need to understand who was the first to ban smoking anyway. It was the Nazis. It was about control. PETA doesn't care about animals. More animals die under PETA than anything else. Uh, women's rights doesn't care about women's rights. They care about making more abortions. Uh, so it's all under the guise of caring for you, and it's really in, in controlling you. If they can control the guns, they can control, you know, how you eat, how you live, how you think, everything. You know, the uh, fairness doctrine, yeah. for example. You know, all this kind of stuff. You know, uh, that's why they abuse people like uh, Brother Peterson. You know, Michael Dyson attacks him, doesn't even allow him to speak. Yeah. So if it's a freedom of speech they're after, where was Jesse Lee Peterson on that TV show? I remember that TV show. <laughs> where yeah. were you allowed to even speak? I what know. happened to our freedom? It's about our freedom. Wally, God bless you, man. Thank you, and I pray for your safety, and we'll have you back, of course. Thank you. You bet. God bless. Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny. Views expressed by guests and callers on today's program may not necessarily represent the views of the station. For more information, call 1-800-411-BOND. That's 1-800-411-BOND. Or visit our website at bondinfo.org.